Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga and this time Carlsbad 1907 we continue the tournament and we're gonna have couple of games against very strong opponents and couple of games which were included into uh, one of the most important chess books in the in the history mostly about chess endgames so if you are lacking knowledge of the chess endgames is definitely worth to study uh, Akiba Rubinstein games and this is one of the examples not only the end game how to win the end game but also uh, how to remaneuver the pieces to the better positions very important positional game uh, and this was uh, actually very nice masterpiece so just a reminder after first game in the tournament in on stand 1907 which akiba rubinstein lost uh, this is one of the another games so without further ado let's introduce the players david Janowski at that time number nine in the world but just three years earlier uh, according to the chess metrics he was number one player in the world very sharp tactical player a uh, very strong opponent uh, at that time in Ostende 1907 he was already 39 years old uh, he's ranking 2672 and in this game he's going to play as white and his opponent of course Akiba Rubinstein number five in the world uh, he's ranking 2724 24 years old and in this game he's going to play as black Janowski open with e4 we have e5 knight f3 knight c6 knight c3 and now knight f6 so four knights game we have bishop b5 so Spanish variation and here Rubinstein could go actually for knight d4 which is called Rubinstein variation but in 1907 uh, he didn't know that variation yet so he invented that um, later uh, and he just played very standard bishop b4 so um, this is of course double spanish we have also castle we have castle and now d3 uh, and here rubinstein uh, gives up the the pair of bishops so we have bishop takes on c3 uh, b takes on c3 and now d6 and white of course could go for the uh, symmetrical uh, option but it doesn't make sense uh, white want to keep the pair of bishops it's the it's the asset definitely but at the same time, um, this pawn, a pawn, is quite a, a weakness. We have bishop g5 now uh, pinning the knight on the on the f6. We have queen e7, uh, and now modern theory says rook e1. Make a space for this bishop, as this bishop doesn't pin anything um, anymore because this knight is going to d8 and then jumping to e6. Pretty natural stuff. So, for example, d4 and knight e6, then this bishop has to retreat to bishop c1 um, and then after c5 uh, we have bishop f1. So this is the most popular uh, continuation nowadays in the 21st century if you are interested in the modern theory. Uh, but at that time we have queen d2. So uh, pretty much uh, principles of the opening. We want to connect the rooks uh, and also it's you know watching together with the bishop on h6. So in some moment if black would play something like h6 uh, maybe it's gonna be the opportunity to sacrifice the bishop for two pawns and get some attack and as Janowski was one of the sharpest uh, tactician of that era then better to not do that uh, if you are not sure about your defense uh, for now we have knight d8 so pretty natural by Akiba Rubinstein uh, we have bishop c4 now changing the diagonal for this bishop uh, and if the knight uh, gonna continue to e6 maybe uh, Janowski would just uh, give up the pair of bishops and actually um, exchange this bishop for the for the knight uh, this is why we have bishop e6 and now bishop b3 saying uh, okay your knight is stuck on d8 so maybe you have to do something uh, and yes akiba actually fixed the pawn structure of janowski so we have bishop b3 a takes on b3 and now janowski has uh, this pawns and also semi-open a file 
we have knight e6 as planned and now bishop h4 uh, and here is very interesting moment uh, if rubinstein tries to go for example to uh, f4 it looks like very natural move like it could be the plan uh, for example knight f4 uh, the problem is janowski could sacrifice the pawn and play a knight d4 uh, so this is what akiba wanted to avoid for example it takes on d4 and after queen f4 uh, d takes on c3 yes black got one pawn extra but now white gonna get a ton of initiative for example rook a to e1 and um, then queen e3 uh, and then attack with these two pawns uh, that would be very very dangerous uh, of course black could try some some counterplay like queen e5 uh, queen e3 uh, and then knight g4 with the attack on the queen and also threatening the checkmate uh, but white can simply go um, for the queen h3 then queen h5 defending the knight uh, and then um, this way or another f4 is coming and these two pawns uh, can be very dangerous especially if Janowski plays so uh, Rubinstein as a positional player he didn't want to give Janowski any initiative uh, if, if he has the chance so he simply plays um, h6 we have rook f to e1 and now a6 as this rook uh, was the only guardian on a7 so first before moving the rook then of course we have to play um, a6 uh, and here Janowski should go uh, immediately in the center just play d4 it looks like very very natural move uh, however we have bishop g3 first uh, and then planning for d4 but now uh, Rubinstein uh, has the tempo so now he has a chance to play knight h5 and exchange does that bishop so we have d4 now and now rubinstein play knight e to f4 uh, so this pair of the knights cooperate very nicely uh, and this knight gonna take uh, the bishop anytime if rubinstein thinks that's uh, that's the right moment and now Janowski decided that he can exchange um, the knight for the for the bishop this way or another uh, it's not uh, possible actually to keep that bishop so we have bishop f4 knight f4 and now g3 kicking the knight and now we have knight g6 in the next move uh, Rubinstein want to play f5 uh, pretty natural of course so this is why we have queen d3 uh, now covering the, the f5 uh, supporting the pawn and now we have queen e6 saying um, f5 is is coming anyway so we have knight d2 also preparing some support for that pawn or maybe the strike in the center um, as well uh, and now we have f5 as planned uh, so first Janowski went for d5 kicking the queen queen d7 still keeping an eye on them on the f5 we have e takes on f5 rook f5 and now knight e4 so look at this Janowski set up his knight in the so beautiful strategic position and this knight is is defending f2 so rubinstein of course doubled the rooks but now he cannot attack f2 because knight is guarding and you cannot um, remove the knight easily so you have to find the way we have rook e3 and now you can actually pause the video and find the way to improve the position of black pieces now this is a little bit tricky because it's not the tactic you have to find the way how to improve the position so you can pause for how long you want uh, and then just think about this position uh, if you want to of course uh, improve your positional skills so I think this is great moment to actually uh, do that while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so Akiba Rubinstein wanted to exchange this knight because this knight is blocking all the possibilities for um, for black. Uh, of course, if black plays something like uh, queen b5, there is the problem because uh, white already have the rook on the semi-open a file and uh, white probably would just exchange the, the queens and get the, you know, the rook on the a file fully operational. So that, that is not the greatest idea. So what Rubinstein did is he remaneuvered his knight. So his um, idea is bring the knight 
this way and exchange the knight in the center. So that's the uh, Rubinstein idea. And he started, of course, from knight e7. Congratulations if you found that plan. And now from the white perspective, it looks like this knight want to put the pressure on d5 and the queen is the babysitter of this pawn, so it doesn't make much sense. Uh, and if you would like to support the pawn, uh, the game could become very, very crazy. So, for example, uh, rook h5 with the idea of the um, uh, queen h3, that's the first idea. And another idea is bring the knight this way to the center. So black would have very, very strong game. And you cannot uh, solve that problem easily. If you try something like f3, uh, maybe the open um, the second rank for the for the heavy pieces the problem is knight f5 is coming anyway uh, you cannot bring the the rook over there because the knight would harass the rook uh, anyway so doesn't make sense probably rook e2 e1 and after knight d4 your pawn is attacked twice um, if you bring the knight then you're gonna have this queen h3 and you even cannot defend that pawn so this is completely losing of course uh, if you play queen f1 it makes a lot of sense now controlling h3 the problem is again knight f5 is coming and if the rook uh, just retreat let's say c3 then knight d4 is coming anyway uh, and now after let's say f3 uh, rook can come back to f5 and then uh, knight d2 again it looks like okay we have three defenders three attackers so everything should be okay but now black have the tactic uh, and this is knight f3 and actually this is very nice tactic because after uh, let's say rook f3 rook f3 knight f3 we have e4 and this way of course black gonna win one pawn and this pawn also can be can be easily supported so again this is winning however after rook h5 what white could play is rook f3 and it's very interesting because the biggest issue here of course the knight cannot jump to f5 because now we're gonna have the fork it was not before because the knight came with the tempo on the rook but now this is not possible so um probably something like queen h3 but this is not that dangerous anymore uh because now it can be defended so also you can think how would you defend that it's not very complicated rook f8 and this is of course forced so a king f8 queen f3 with check and now the queen can just go to g2 so that could be interesting option for for Janowski and next move would be c5 um, and starting to you know the pawn break and, and continue the game and so white according to the engine is slightly better here uh, so definitely that was the, the option but interesting thing but it's some older books where the, the grandmasters analyzed that game uh, they said that c4 is losing uh, because of this variation f3 or queen f1 but they didn't think that um, somehow rook f3 was was uh, pretty good for white and solve all the problems uh, so uh, Janowski before playing c4 he knows that uh, first he centralized his rook uh, and now we have king h8 and now the situation is completely different uh, because after c4 uh, there is not even possible to play this variation with rook h5 because rook h5 queen f1 uh, and now if the knight comes to f5 with the tempo on the rook the problem is rook f3 works um, even better because now this rook is without the protection so black would be even uh, achieve nothing here so this is why rubinstein just simply follow his plan uh first plan and he played knight g8 uh, and he wants to exchange the knights so we have f3 we have knight f6 as planned we have rook f1 and now knight e4 and queen e4 and again you can pause the video right now and take how much time you want this is another positional uh, maneuver uh, and this is one uh, some of the commentators actually claimed that this is the first maneuver of this caliber in the chess history so uh, you can try something very very unorthodox you can imagine that 113 years ago that was something unorthodox um, while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So uh, this was for the first time. Look at this maneuver. What Akiba Rubinstein found in the game uh, was just stunning. So he wants to improve the position of the pieces, the rooks, 
they are in the perfect position both of them are doubled of course uh, and uh, pointing uh, on the semi open file on the f3 but nothing can be done uh, because the rooks protects the queen protects and if needed in the future even the king can protect and um, yeah nothing can be done here so Rubinstein found another way of actually breaking through that position and he played queen d8 this move is just very very interesting now what is the idea idea is because Rubinstein want to bring the queen to the queen side uh, so the idea is bring the queen this way this is just amazing this is just amazing he couldn't do this way as Janowski actually set up these pieces these pawns to protect all the light squares however uh, this is what Akiba Rubinstein found so we have queen g4 making a space for the rook probably the plan was bring the rook to the e4 and then try to uh, make the pawn break uh, and this backward pawn just push it uh, in the right moment but after queen b8 he realized that okay my rook gonna be pinned and if my rook is moved uh, then Rubinstein gonna come here with tempo so first we have king g2 uh, we have queen a7 as planned and now rook f to e1 so of course this pawn couldn't be uh, actually pushed because uh, it couldn't take on the on the e5 as the rook was hanging on the on the f1 we have queen c5 and here Janowski started to feel uncomfortable about the, the queen on the queen side uh, and he moved back with the queen so queen e4 with the plan of the exchanging the queen so we have queen b4 now we have a rook from the first rank to the to the e2 uh, and now we have also by Rubinstein uh, remaneuvering the rook a little bit back uh, we have queen d3 as planned and now Janowski want to just exchange the queens so we have have king g8 improving the position of the king as well we have queen c3 and here Rubinstein say okay we can exchange the queens uh but on my terms and he play a5 saying we're gonna open the a file who gonna be first there uh, as the rooks are blocked in the center it's not that easy for white to do that so we have queen b4 a takes on b4 we have c3 uh b takes on c3 rook c3 and of course uh, Rubinstein is first on the a file and now finding the plan for white uh, it's a bit tricky uh, the correct continuation is actually c5 and it looks like a strongest continuation there are a couple of interesting variations so for example rook a5 then b4 just defending rook a4 going after the pawn and now look at this boom b5 uh, and now we're gonna have a b6 threat which is very interesting so if black actually are not careful uh, and want to just um centralize the king very natural king f7 then we can have very interesting b6 move and after c takes on b6 look at this uh what would you play in this position c6 boom b takes on c6 d takes on c6 and white creates a very dangerous uh past pawn so the only way to stop it is actually uh move the make the passive move rook a8 uh, but then rook b2 rook c8 now rook b6 and this pawn can be very very dangerous so um black can defend that position but it's uh, very very unpleasant and definitely black cannot win that game uh, however after b5 there is much inter more interesting move rook a5 uh, this was uh, this would be played probably the best move for for black here and now b6 doesn't work because in the in the right moment c takes on b6 c6 uh black gonna have this move rook c5 and this uh, this pawn is lost uh so for example rook e to c2 and now uh, rook f7 and going after this pawn this way so for example uh, rook c5 d takes on c5 and yes white can win this pawn uh, and it looks like everything is fine however after rook c7 uh, rook b6 this rook has to actually babysit uh, the pawn but now black can win the game with the king f8 and coming to them to the d6 uh, winning that pawn and having the passed pawn uh, so that should be enough actually to win the game 
of course one trap here king f7 you cannot go king f7 with the same plan because of the rook b7 so you have to be very very careful the rook is of course pinned cannot take them the pawn uh, and of course white would uh, promote the queen and win the game so very tricky position but still you have to be very careful especially in the end games like that uh, but white of course would play something like c takes on d6 c takes on d6 uh, then rook b2 defend that pawn uh, with the plan of bringing the rook and attack the pawn on b7 so black probably would just stop it Janowski in the worst case scenario he could just you know make a threefold repetition here uh, and just draw the game uh, so this pawn uh, has to be of course protected uh, otherwise it's gonna be loose so probably that would be the draw so c5 was the very interesting option however for some reason uh, Janowski bring the king to the game this way king h3 it already looks like pretty ugly move because what this king gonna do for example uh, on g4 um, yes, it can defend that pawn, but um, otherwise um, there are some problems with this king. Uh, these pawns can be dangerous if the king is in the front of the of the pawn. So white have to be very careful and king h3 looks like the move which probably is losing the game because now we have very simple move b6 uh, saying okay now you cannot play c5 anymore so we have king g4 and now rook a1 so infiltrating the uh, white's territory and now this was the last chance where janowski could play uh, f4 and try to make this pawn break uh, play f4 uh, e takes on f4 g takes on f4 uh, and now maybe he was worried that a rook can come to b1 and then another rook can come this way uh, and win the pawn so probably he was afraid of that but again he had this draw option with the with the rook e1 of course if the king comes to them to the f7 uh, we're gonna win this pawn uh, so probably rook f8 rook e7 and again we would have the threefold repetition uh, but Janowski uh, didn't want to uh, draw maybe uh, I'm not really sure what he wanted to do uh, first prophylactic move so rook b2 so now a rook to b1 is not possible uh, but now Rubinstein goes for king h7 we have b4 looks like very dangerous now c5 is coming but now we have king g6 and there is no time for c5 the problem is rook d1 now this pawn is without the protection so for example c takes on b6 c takes on b6 rook c6 uh, but now simply b5 and this pawn is lost and also uh, gonna defend both of the pawns so that's not possible this is why janowski first play rook b to b3 uh, the problem with this move it doesn't work it makes a lot of sense because now uh, c5 can be played and the rook uh, to d1 can be countered with the rook d3 because now rooks are connected but there is another problem which rubinstein just exploited rook f5 so the king on g4 has a huge problem so now rook g5 is coming and if the king goes to the to the h3 then the rook gonna continue on h5 and win this pawn if the king goes to the g2 then this way uh this pawn can be uh won anyway so rubinstein definitely gonna win the pawn now uh, is it possible to defense well Janowski tried and he played rook c2 defending the pawn but now we're gonna have rook h1 anyway uh, and now again rook g5 is coming and then rook h5 and winning that pawn so again this pawn has to has to be lost uh, if you try to defend like something like h3 this is very bad po position for the king look at this king so h5 first um, king h4 and now rook g1 first taking under control g3 very important move and now whatever white player actually uh, for example rook e2 then we're gonna have king h6 uh, and then we're gonna have g5 in the next move that's gonna be the checkmate f4 doesn't work because of 
Uh, actually, this pawn can be taken, but much more precise would be rook f6 first, because after that, white would have one extra check here, which is not necessary, it's still winning for black, but rook f6 would be much more precise. Uh, and now, for example, rook f2, and the problem is e takes on f4 is winning anyway, uh, because g takes on f4, and now we have sacrifice, boom, rook f4, uh, and then a checkmate on g5. So uh, definitely h3 is the very, very bad idea to play in this position. Uh, king h3, uh, as I said, rook h5, uh, king g2, and we're gonna have the checkmate here. So it doesn't work as well. And finally, rook b2, b2 looks the most logical, double uh, protection for the h2. But now we're gonna have h5 king h3 and now we're gonna win this pawn so this way or another uh, Janowski has to give the pawn so he decided that he gonna play f4 now immediately we have e takes on f4 g takes on f4 and now Rubinstein simply uh, goes for the pawn on the f4 so h5 first kicking the king we have king g3 rook g1 with the check and now we have king f2 and now rook g4 and this pawn cannot be defended anymore so uh, we have rook f3, we have rook g2 f4, uh, we have rook f4, rook f4 with the check, uh, king e3, king f5, uh, king d3, we have rook f3, uh, and now the king uh, has to go somewhere. If the king e2, for example, we're gonna have the problem rook h3. Uh, threatening to win the pawn, so probably something like king f1, uh, g5, and this pawn's gonna gonna roll. Uh, king g2 now rook h4 attacking this pawn, and of course this attack can be supported with the with the king, probably king f3, uh, rook f4, and now if the king goes to the uh, to the center, then this king can support the the rook, uh, and the rook can come. Uh, to g4 and win this pawn and that's completely winning and if the king goes to another way then as i said the king gonna win the pawn together with the rook on c4 so uh king e2 is not the greatest idea janowski played uh, king d4 uh, and now this is the rook end game so most of the rook end games are considered as a draw the problem is rubinstein got the special talent um, or hard work with the rook end games and he understand the rook end games i think the the best in the chess history now maybe uh, only magnus carlsen do it better but rubinstein was the like a machine in the rook pure rook end games he didn't make according to some of the authors of the books he didn't make even a single mistakes in the pure rook end games uh, lasker did sometimes capablanca made some inaccuracies however in the pure rook end games uh, rubinstein was just the best so what he did first he wanted to lock the pawns because this c5 is still a danger this is still counterplay so c5 is coming so first what to do attack the pawn on b4 so of course b5 is forced uh first uh, we have a couple of checks so janowski deliver rook f2 we have king g6 rook g2 king h6 and now b5 is forced now rook f3 so cutting the king from entering to the king side and now these pawns can roll over uh, and now if white are passive it's completely lost so for example i just show you what will happen rook c2 we're gonna have g5 we're gonna have let's say rook g2 uh, h4 rook c2 uh, we're gonna have g4 rook g2 and um, king h5 just a little support uh, and now we're gonna have h3 which is completely winning of course uh, let's say rook e2 and then g3 and this pawn gonna win the game so rook g3 first rook h2 but now uh king g4 and uh, this rook of course gonna be exchanged and this pawn gonna be promoted or white have to exchange the rook for the pawn and of course this is also winning for black uh, so we have king e4 by Janowski, but this is still better for black. So first rook f6 still staying on the f file. Uh, and now 
it looks like okay maybe h4 blocking all the advance uh, but it would not work because now rook g6 and exchanging the rooks of course favors black so something like rook a2 maybe this way would have to be played but it's not enough because now rook g4 attacking this pawn also attacking this pawn potentially so king d3 just to defend uh, was a must and then simply take that pawn so advancing this pawn was not the greatest idea even if white have some counterplay it doesn't really matter because now rook g4 and this pawn gonna be uh, faster so let's say what would let's uh, find out what would happen rook c7 h4 uh, then let's say rook c6 h3 uh, rook d6 with check uh, and now king g5 uh, and now uh, let's say rook d8 and trying to catch that pawn uh, also making a space for this pawn but it's not enough simply h2 and of course rook h4 very classical way of winning uh, this kind of end game so uh, if you didn't know that then uh, always you can bring the rook and yeah and then this rook never can catch the pawn uh, so Janowski uh, knows that his pawn uh, better if stays on the on the h2 and he played rook a2 trying to get some counterplay and get the pawn on c7 and now we have g5 we also have rook a7 and here another beautiful move of Akiba Rubinstein look at this very very important move first he delivers a check boom rook f4 very important uh, so if the king moves for example to e3 uh he gonna lose this pawn and defend the pawn on c7 so king d3 is forced and now remember this king is on d3 and it's very very important for this position because now we have rook f7 defending the pawn uh, and now Finally, the only way uh, what Janowski can play, uh, trying to make the pawn break, c5, this is what he played. And now, which pawn would you take uh, this pawn on the c5? How would you play this? If you take with the b takes on c5, boom, b6 is winning, but for white. So black have to be very, very careful. So this is the last trap, tactic trap by Janowski. Uh, Rubinstein played D takes on C5 and now we have D6, the same. However, there is one huge difference. The king now is on D3. Uh, so Rubinstein has the saving move, boom, rook D7. And now, of course, the pawn is pinned, so cannot take on c7. This is why we have rook c7 and now rook d6. And again, uh, still Rubinstein have two pawns against one pawn. So that was the example how to win the rook endgame with having one extra pawn, which, uh, you know, but you have other pawns on the other side. Now Rubinstein have also this passed pawn, so it's completely uh, won for him. Uh, Janowski still tried. We have king e4. Now we have rook d4 with the check. We have king f5, h4. Uh, and now we have rook c8. So trying to... Uh, get some maybe some mating ideas so of course black have to be very careful rook f4 still first kicking the the king so we have king e5 uh, and now c4 as the pawn is defended so we have rook h8 with the check king g7 rook c8 and now king g6 so uh, trying to escape this way we have rook g8 king h5 but now h3 saying okay that's gonna be uh, difficult for you i'm gonna deliver a couple of more checks but now uh, black have the time to push the pawn so we have c3 rook h8 with the check king um, g6 rook g8 and now we have king h6 rook h8 king g7 and now rook goes back to c8 but now rook f3 so very slowly but this pawn is marching and it's more and more dangerous we have rook c6 so the last chance of janowski is his own passed pawn uh, we have rook h3 who calculates better rook b6 rook f3 and in this position david janowski resign and he resign because uh rubinstein has two extra pawns and his uh, 
phone it doesn't really matter uh, and you know why because even if he plays something like rook c6 trying to stop that pawn uh, it doesn't matter because black have another passed pawn which cannot be attacked uh, from behind uh, because rook cannot come this way or this way or this way because the king is always there uh, and if we're gonna have h3 and a race of the of the pawns the biggest issue here yes janowski can actually make the queen but after queen h2 he gonna lose it immediately so uh yeah he gonna lose that game so this is why after rook f3 janowski resigned so this was a very beautiful uh, masterpiece positional masterpiece i hope you enjoy what we could learn from this was first how to remaneuver the pieces uh, and rubinstein did it as you see the knight was remaneuvered with the four moves uh, and then the queen was remaneuvered to the queen side with the five moves and it, it was the first uh, game in the chess history probably where all of these pieces were uh, remaneuvered in such a fashion so very huge inspiration i hope you uh, got something from that that game uh, also how to realize how to win the end game when you have one extra pawn on one of the sides this is possible so this is the example of how actually Rubinstein did it if you found this valuable drop the comment what do you think about this game and if you enjoyed that press like if for some reason you didn't like this game press and like and if you don't want to miss other games from Akiba Rubinstein saga press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one